Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the perfect granny square. So granny squares have been around for a long time, and they are still pretty popular for their texture and for the different kind of color combination things that you can do with them. And I really like making granny squares, but there are just a couple things that I do not like about making granny squares. And I'm going to show you the things that I don't like about making granny squares and how to fix them as well as just how to make a basic granny square. So I have two different versions here. This is a solid color. This one is made in all one color yarn. And obviously this one is made in several different colors of yarn. And these are kind of the two, the two options when you're making a granny square. You can make any number of colors that you want, but usually it's either you have one color or you have more than one color. So these are both made the normal way, you know, the way that, the way that I was taught to make them in kind of a, a learn to crochet book years ago. And as far as I know, this is one of the main couple of different ways that they're normally made. There are, there's at least one other uh, way that I know of, and what makes the difference is how you start and end your rounds. So if you notice, if you look at both of these squares, it's kind of, it's not real obvious. It's kind of hard to see. And it might not be an issue for some people. Not everybody is going to have a problem with it. But it's something I personally do not like about granny squares. And that is, if you look right here, in these little blocks right here, you have these turning chains. And in some cases, they will be less visible. And in some cases, they will be more visible. But regardless, I personally do not like the look of turning chains in my crochet. And this is no exception. I just don't like, you know, how that you can see the break in the round where you started and where you stopped. And I don't like this little ridge that shows up every time you had a turning chain. And same thing over here. It's the same little ridge from the turning chain every time you start another round. So that's the one thing that I don't like. And then the other thing that I don't like about making granny squares is that, um, well, there are actually a couple different ways that you can start and end. And in some patterns, I've seen where you like start your turning chain here and then you chain like one, two, three, four, five, and then just have a chain loop and then work around. And then when you come back, you only work like two double crochet here and then slip stitch into the turning chain. And that's one way to do it, but you still have a turning chain and it can still be visible. And like I said, that may not be a problem for everybody, but that's one thing that I personally don't like to see. Or this is the way that I was taught to make them. You start over here and then you do your chain. You, you know, do your two double crochet and you make it all the way around then you slip stitch in the top of the chain and this is where the end of the round is but you need to start the round in the corner so when you go to start the next round you need to be over here in the corner so then you have to slip stitch across that first block and into the corner before making another turning chain and then going around and joining and then you have to slip stitch again across that little section to the next corner to begin the next round and those are basically the two things that I don't like about making granny squares. And again, it's not going to bother everybody. And it doesn't really bother me. I just prefer that those things not be there. So I'm going to show you how I like to crochet granny squares, where um, the method that I like to use totally eliminates the turning chain. And you don't have to slip stitch across the little section to get back to the corner. It just ends right in the corner. So first I'm going to show you how to make this solid granny square that's all one color and my way of avoiding the little issues that I have with with the regular method. And so I should mention that you can get the free pattern for a for my version of the granny square on my site 
The link is in the description box below. And you will also find the printable PDF version of the pattern in my Ravelry store. And it is free Ravelry download and you will find the link to that in the description box as well. So to make the granny square itself, we're going to need some yarn. The exact amount will depend on um, what yarn weight you want to use because you can use this with any yarn weight you want. And it will also depend on how many colors you're going to use and how large you want to make it because you can make this continue growing and getting as big as you want it to be. Um, and you can even make an entire blanket just beginning with a granny square and then continuing to, to make it bigger and bigger and bigger as you go. And you can make it as big as you want. So that will also affect how much yarn you'll actually need. So I have some worsted weight yarn here and I'm going to be using a size G hook with mine. And you can use like an H, you know, or an I with your worsted weight yarn, whatever gives you the look that you want. So just use a hook that is within the recommended um, range. Um, your yarn label will usually tell you what the recommended hook sizes are for that particular yarn. So I've got my hook and my yarn needle. This is for weaving in your ends and some scissors to cut the ends, obviously. Um, if you're going to be making a bunch of them, then you should establish, once you make the first one, establish the size that your first one comes out as a standard for how big you want the rest of them to be so that you can um, block them all to be the exact same size when you're finished. So we're going to start with our solid granny square, like I said, and a granny square is worked from the center out. So we start in the middle of the square and we work outwards to create that uh, granny square shape. So what we're going to do is find the end of our yarn and we're going to start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to work a slip stitch into the very first chain, which is the fourth chain from the hook. So we're going to skip one, two, three, and then go into the fourth one and slip stitch into that chain to make this little circle, this little ring. And it has a little bitty hole in the middle. It's easier to feel and find, but you can't really see it on camera as well. But there is a little hole in the middle right there. And that's where we're going to be working our stitches. So normally, I should also mention that I like to pull on the tail to kind of close up that very first chain. Um, anyway, so normally, what we would do here is we would chain three and then count that as our first double crochet and then start working with the rest of our double crochets. However, I don't like the look of the turning chain personally in mine. So instead of the turning chain, I'm going to replace it with the chainless starting double crochet. Now you may have seen this on my channel before because I've done several videos that involve this, but this is one of my favorite crochet tricks. And the chainless starting double crochet creates a double crochet that actually looks like a double crochet, but doesn't require a turning chain. So we use it to get to the height we need to begin our round or our row, but it does not, um, it doesn't look like a turning chain because it's not a turning chain. It's actually a double crochet that starts from the bottom. So what we're going to do is stretch the loop on the hook until it is about the same height as a regular double crochet at this gauge. And I'm going to put my finger, my index finger, on the back of the loop to hold it still. And this will keep the stitch from getting untwisted. So if you want more um, information on this, by the way, you should go check out my video on the chainless starting stitches and the invisible slip stitch. And that will give you a more in-depth tutorial on that and how to do it with other stitches besides the double crochet. But anyway, I've got my loop stretched out to about the same height as a regular double crochet. I've got my index finger on the back of the loop holding it still. And then what I'm going to do is bring my hook towards me and then back behind that stretched out loop to kind of make the equivalent of a yarn over on my hook. And we basically just yarned over with that extended loop. Now I'm going to insert my hook into the center of the ring, the ring of chains going to yarn over and pull up a loop and you want to make sure you're still holding on 
to the back of the loop with your index finger. So I now have the equivalent of three loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the last two. And that creates what well, looks exactly like a double crochet, but it performs the function of a turning chain in getting us up to the height to work the next row without um, having to have that chain there. So that counts as my first stitch. So granny squares are worked with little clusters of three double crochets together, like so. So that was my first double crochet. I'm going to work two more regular double crochet into the center of the ring, like so. So I have three double crochets so far. The first one is my chainless starting double crochet. And now we're going to make a corner. So to make a corner, we're going to turn the corner by chaining two, like so, and then working three more double crochet into the center of the ring. Like so. So here's our corner. You can see how that chain two made the corner. So now I'm going to chain two again and work three more regular double crochet into the center of the ring. And then chain two for the next corner and work three more double crochet into the center of the ring. So you can see that we have uh, four of these groups of three double crochets. So here's three, 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 and three. And then we have these chain two spaces in the corners, um, but we only have them in three of the corners. And we're going to stop right here because I don't want to put another chain two into this corner because then if I join right here, then I will have to, like I said, the one of the things I don't like, I'll have to slip stitch across to the next corner to begin again because we always begin the next round in a corner. So to avoid having to do that, this is one of my favorite granny square tricks ever. Instead of that chain two, I'm going to chain one and work a half double crochet in the top of my chainless starting double crochet from the beginning of the round. So that chainless starting double crochet has, you know, a top on it just like a regular stitch and it is basically just like a regular stitch. So I am working a regular half double crochet into that space. And what this does, even though it doesn't look exactly identical to the rest of the corners now, as we continue on, it will completely disappear. And what that does is that starts us out in the very center of that corner chain space, which is right where we want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and start the next round. And what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that my corner, if we look at this example here, with this one where you start with a chain, you start your corner right here, and then when you begin when you get back around to the end of the round, you slip stitch into the chain space and then across to the next corner chain space. And then we we make our corner normally by working the three double crochet, or actually it's a turning chain plus two double crochet. Then we make our chain two for the corner and put three more double crochet in the same space for the corner to turn that corner. Well, there's nothing quote wrong with that, but I like to do it a little differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by working this side of that corner. And then when we come back around, then we'll finish the other side of that first corner. So keep in mind that this little half double crochet that we just did counts as part of our chain space. So this is not going to be counted like a regular stitch. Even though it is a stitch, we're going to kind of pretend that it's part of the chain space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the loop on my hook again, hold on to the back of the loop with my index finger, and yarn over with that stretched out loop. Then I'm going to insert my hook into that same chain space that we were just, uh, you know, the, the yarn was attached to. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And yarn over, pull through two loops. There's my chainless starting double crochet. And I'm going to work two more regular double crochet in the same chain space. 
and that's that's how we're going to start our corner instead of starting over here and doing three double crochet chain two three double crochet all in one corner we're just going to begin with the second half of the corner and come around and then finish the other half of it at the end so now we're on to um, since we're on to round two of our our granny square now we have to get across to this next chain space down here to make the next corner because when you're working a granny square unless it's a variation on a traditional granny square we never work into the tops of these stitches we always work into the chain spaces so we're going to create another chain space by chaining one and on the next round we'll work into that chain space but now here's the next we're going to skip these three double crochet right here and then into the next corner chain space we're going to work three double crochet chain two and then three more double crochet so there's the first three double crochet chain two for the corner and then three more double crochet like so and then I'm going to chain one again and skip the next three double crochet from the row below and work that same sequence into the corner chain space again three double crochet chain two and three more double crochet like so so that's what the corner looks like and I'm going to chain one again and do the same thing into the next corner three double crochet chain two and three more double crochet all right so we've made it most of the way around except this first corner where we started is only part of a corner it's not the whole corner where we have both of our groups of three double crochet so we're going to chain one skip this group of three double crochet down here and work three double crochet into that corner chain space that we started in and then we're going to do that little corner trick again where we can end up right in the middle of the chain space we're going to chain one and work a regular half double crochet into the top of the chainless starting stitch from the row below and that creates basically the equivalent of our chain space and I like to kind of pull that half double crochet a little shorter in length so that it is going to be less um, less of the height that you that you want because a single crochet is a little too short but a regular half double crochet when it's left kind of loose can be a little too tall at times so I like to just kind of tug on the loop on my hook to make the half double crochet a little shorter so here is what our granny square looks like at this point and we are again right in the center of this corner so I'm going to stretch the loop on my hook and work a chainless starting double crochet in the same chain space and two more double crochet in the same chain space where we started our first corner then I'm going to chain one and now we can't skip all the way across to the other corner so we're going to work into this chain space that's along the first side so we're going to skip the three double crochet that are down here and work three double crochet into this chain space right here like so now we're going to chain one and then work the corner and the corner will always be the same three double crochet chain two three double crochet all in that corner chain space all right now the next chain space is along the side so we're going to chain one skip those three double crochet down below and work three double crochet into the chain one space from the row below like so and then we're going to chain one and then work the corner into that corner space so as always we're going to do three double crochet chain two and then three more double crochet 
all into that one little space. So we're around the next corner and here our next chain space is along the side. I'm gonna chain one, skip those next three double crochet and then work three double crochet into the chain space uh, along that side. Then we're gonna chain one and then work the corner sequence into the corner space. Three double crochet, chain two, and three more double crochet into that space. And then we're going to chain one. And again, the next chain space is along the side here. So I'm going to work three double crochet into that space. And then we're down to our last corner here, which is partially done because we started half of that corner already. So I'm gonna chain one skip these three double crochet down here and work three double crochet into this, this corner space that we had started in. And then to finish out the corner, I'm gonna chain one and work a regular half double crochet in the top of the chainless starting stitch or the chainless starting double crochet from the beginning of the round and pull it to make it a little tight or a little short. So that is round three of our granny square so far. And I'll lay it flat just so you can see what it looks like at this point. And you can continue, you know, making it as large as you want. But I made mine with five rounds. So here's one, two, three, four, five. And then I edged it with a row of single crochet. That is optional. You don't have to do the row of single crochet around the outside. But just for the, the demonstration, I decided to do that. So here we're gonna start round four. And again, I'm starting in the middle of this chain space at the corner. I'm gonna stretch the loop on my hook and work the chainless starting double crochet and two regular double crochets into that same chain space, like so. I'm gonna chain one. And now we can see we have two uh, empty chain spaces along the side of our square now. So I'm gonna chain one, skip those three double crochet from below, work three double crochet into the first chain space. Then I'm gonna chain one again, skip the next three double crochet, and work another three double crochet into the next chain space along the side. and then I'm going to chain one and then skip the next three double crochet and work that corner sequence into the corner chain space. Three double crochet, chain two, and three more double crochet, all in that space. So I'm going to basically continue repeating that around um, the chain one and then three double crochet into the next side chain space twice, because we have two of those there, and then the corner sequence worked into the corner. All right, so now I am back to where I started, and I've worked um, the previous corner, and then the double crochet, groups of three double crochet into those chain spaces on the side. Now I'm back to the corner where I started, got my chain one, I'm gonna skip the three double crochet, work three double crochet into that last corner, and then chain one and work a little short half double crochet into the top of that chainless starting stitch. I like to tighten it down a little bit. And that is our fourth round. Now the fifth round is going to be basically exactly the same. We're going to always work the same corner sequence into all the corners and work the same groups of three double crochet into all the chain spaces on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and work that fifth round and then I'll show you how I like to add the single crochet edging. So here is our granny square at this point. And again, like I said, you can keep adding rounds as much as you want until it is whatever size you want. You can make these humongous if you want to and that's fine. So now I'm going to add my little single crochet edging just because I like to do that. 
And what I'm going to do is because I'm starting in the corner, I am going to start with a chainless starting single crochet so that we don't have the little kind of the little blip at the beginning and end of the round where you see a little chain space and you can feel it where we started. So to do that, you're basically going to stretch the loop on your hook just a little bit and work a single crochet normally into the chain space that we're already in. So I'm going to work a second single crochet into that chain space like so. So I've got the first one, which is my chainless single crochet, then a second one. And then I'm just going to basically single crochet all the way around. So I'm single crocheting um, one single crochet in each of those three double crochet right there. One single crochet into that chain space. Single crochet into the next three double crochet from below. Single crochet in the chain space. And so on until we get to the corner. And then once we get to the corner, I'm working into those three double crochet. And in that corner chain space, I'm gonna work three single crochet, like so. So now I'm gonna single crochet in each stitch across the next side, just like I did before. Single crochet in each of the double crochets from below and in each of those chain one spaces. And then in the corner, work three single crochet. And then again, I'm just going to continue doing that until I get back to where I started. All right, so now I'm back to the beginning. And if you noticed, um, I finished the uh, three single crochet in um, those three double crochet, and that should be said one single crochet in each of those three double crochet. And if you notice when we started the single crochet round, we only worked two single crochet into that first corner. So I'm gonna work one more single crochet into the corner. And then we're going to do a little something different to finish off this round. We don't want to see the slip stitch join that would normally be here. So like this edge, you can see that it doesn't match up and we want to avoid that, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the yarn. And I'm gonna stretch the loop on my hook until the end comes out like that. And thread that tail through my yarn needle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the top of our chainless starting single crochet, which is right here. And we're going to kind of recreate the top of that stitch. This is just a way to join off um, the end of our, our round here and make it look totally seamless. So I'm going to bring my yarn needle kind of in the same path as the top of that stitch, the top loop of that stitch. So I'm gonna bring my yarn needle into, um, kind of inserted from back to front into the second single crochet of the round so we're skipping the chainless one and just going through the second single crochet, like so. And then I'm gonna bring my yarn needle back down through where that yarn originally came from, which was coming out of the top of that last single crochet that we just worked. I'm going back down through the same place, like so. And sometimes you just kinda of little do a little pull on it here and there to tweak it and make it um, kind of fit just right and you can't even see that there's a join there. It's completely completely invisible. So now I like to take a tiny little stitch right there on one of the back of the the strands and make a knot. If you don't like knots you don't have to make a knot but I like to do that and then I can weave in my tail and in my personal opinion the single crochet round is kind of the most secure place to weave in this tail. Um, and if you're sewing all of these together, then you can absolutely use the tail, the yarn tail, to sew them together. That's fine. But I'm just making individual squares, so I'm going to go ahead and weave in my yarn tails. So that is the last of my little yarn tails woven in. I like to just kind of kind of smooth them out, stretch them out um, to make the sides of the square even. And 
that is the wrong side of the granny square and this is the right side. Now this is not blocked yet, but because I'm using a kind of stiff-ish yarn at a relatively small gauge compared to what you would normally, you know, use if you wanted something drapey, this lays pretty flat just by me kind of hand manipulating it, but it will still need to be blocked. So here is my version of the granny square with my little tips on, you know, how to make it as invisible as possible with your join. And here is the regular type of granny square. So the difference is subtle. There's not any kind of drastic changes here. But for me personally, it's enough of a difference that I will prefer to use this method. But take a close look between the two of these and I think you'll be able to see where that this one has these little turning chains in all of the, uh, at the beginning of every corner uh, or corner sequence. This one has no turning chains in it whatsoever, and it is basically completely seamless as far as where we joined our rounds. So if you have any crochet or friends, try making a square with both of these methods and challenge them to see if they can find where you joined the rounds with this method, because this is truly, totally seamless. And once your tail is woven in, good luck finding where your end of the round is because it's really hard to find. See, if I um, turn this over, it is extremely hard to see where I stopped and started. Same for this side. So if you want your granny squares to be completely, completely seamless with no trace of where you stopped and started the rounds at all, then this is the method to use. So for making a multicolored granny square, the pattern itself is basically exactly the same, only we change colors at the end of every round. So this one is just like the uh, traditional example here with the turning chains. And you can see those here, 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 and here, and also right there on the edge. And we're going to make another multicolored granny square with this method that is the totally seamless with no visible joins whatsoever. So I have already made the first round of my square with the same pattern that we used for the seamless version. And to make it multicolored, again, you can do more than one uh, round with the same color before changing colors, but I'm going to do a different color for each round. So I'm going to cut the yarn leaving about a six inch tail and tie off and then just pull it tight to make sure that that uh, little um, tie off point closes up. And now we're going to begin with the next color and I'm going to use this yellow. So to join the new color for our next round, we're going to just pull up a new loop of it and I'm actually going to chain one and then just pull the chain really tight so it disappears. And I also like to bring the yarn tail up over the working yarn and just hold it out um, to the side while we work this first little bit. And if we pull that uh, first chain stitch really tight, then that will help um, lock in or secure that yarn tail. And it helps us get the uh, working yarn into the correct position to work our chainless starting double crochet, like so. And the little chain stitch, once we uh, pull the tail tight and weave in the ends, will be completely invisible. So there's my first uh, chainless starting double crochet. And then I can continue to work the rest of the round. And I like to crochet over my tails to a point. I don't like to like carry it across to the next chain space and then crochet over it there. I just like to crochet over the tail within that first corner that we start in and then I'll weave the rest of it in later. So this is basically exactly like the original square, the, the plain solid colored square, only we're going to change colors at the end of every round. All right, so I'm back to the first corner of my round where we started. And first of all, when we weave in each tail, I'm going to go ahead and finish this round real quick. But when we weave in each tail, when we're changing colors, we always want to weave in the tail 
right into the same color um, crocheted part. So I wouldn't weave in the pink tail into the yellow stitches. We weave the yellow tail into the yellow stitches and the pink tail into the pink stitches. So that helps ensure that the tails don't peek through after they're woven in because if you if you do weave like this pink tail into the yellow stitches, you will see it. It will show up in the stitches and we don't want to see that. So we always weave the tail into their matching color section. So that is my round two and that's basically how we're going to be changing colors. I'm just going to cut the yarn leaving about a six inch tail and tie off. And then to start the next color, we'll pull up a loop of the new color in the center of that chain space, chain one, and then pull the chain really tight so that it kind of disappears. And then we'll just begin the round as normal with the chainless starting double crochet. So you can see that our join where uh, where we begin the beginning and end of the round is still invisible and the color change is still invisible. And this is just how I like to change colors using this method. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of this square. Like I said, it's the exact same pattern as we used for the first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this square and then I will show you how to do the little color change when we get to the border. All right, so now I have finished all of the regular rounds of my granny square and I'm gonna go ahead and add my white border and I'm gonna show you how to join colors with that. It's essentially exactly the same. I just wanted to show it to you anyway, just to make sure that it's clear. So we're going to start again in the same corner that we uh, tied off of the previous color in. I'm gonna insert my hook into that corner chain space and pull up a loop of the new yarn. Then I'm gonna chain one and pull that chain really tight and then work the single crochet or the chainless starting single crochet in that same space and then you can still kind of see that chain right there i'm going to grab the tail and pull on that tail and it makes that chain stitch basically disappear so that you can't even really see it and this is kind of a um, a way to join the color a new color within a chain space without a knot or um without a slip stitch, so you can still use that chainless starting stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my single crochet border in the white all the way around. And on this round, because we are putting a stitch in every single stitch and every single chain space, I am gonna go ahead and crochet over my white tail and my purple tail that I tied off with the purple. So I'm going to finish this round and then I'll show you how I weave in my ends. All right, so here is my finished square. I've joined off the white yarn uh, with the border just the same way I normally would. And now, even though I crocheted over one of my purple tails going around the border and my beginning tail for the white, and then I wove in my white tail around um, the white, uh, under the white border stitches, we still have all these tails left to weave in. And unfortunately, this is not a good uh, instance to just leave all the tails there and call it fringe. So we do have to weave them in. So what we're going to do is weave in each tail into the color section that it matches so that it won't peek through. So I'm going to start with this pink tail. I'm going to thread it into my yarn needle. And for the one in the very center, I kind of like to follow the, um, the little chain stitch ring that goes through the middle of all these stitches. I find that a good place to kind of bury the tail and keep it secure. But at the same time, we also want to be able to kind of weave these up through, diagonally, up through these double crochet um, groups because we want to get it up to this corner so that we can go underneath these two groups of yellow double crochet because there is a, a pink set of chains right there. There's a pink chain space inside those two stitches. So we can kind of follow that as we go under the yellow stitches 
because there's already pink stitches underneath there and it will still be totally hidden. Now there might come a point where you run out of tail and you don't really have any place to insert. So what you do is you take the yarn needle out, you just kind of stick it in where you're going to put it as you finish weaving that tail in and then thread it back through the eye of the yarn needle before pulling it through like that. And then you just kind of want to pull it in several directions to make sure that it's even and it's not pulling anything too tight. And then we can go ahead and snip off that little extra bit of the end. So there's my first tail. Then I'm going to take the second pink tail and you'll notice that this one is coming from this corner chain space right here that these two yellow groups of double crochet are worked into. So I'm going to follow it, follow the crochet underneath it through the bottom of those yellow stitches to follow where um, the chain space is. And then I can just kind of weave it in diagonally. I like to go diagonally through the groups of double crochet and I think I'm going to make my needle come out back up here so that then once I get there I can kind of feed it back underneath these groups of double crochet from the yellow. So you just want to make sure that your needle is going kind of through, not, not piercing strands of yarn, but you want to be sure that it's going through the stitches and not just coming out on one side because you do want this tail to kind of be penetrating the crochet that it's going through so that it will not wiggle its way out. So I'm again going to go through those two groups of double crochet on the corner because my pink chain space is through those. And then I'm going to go diagonally through this next group of pink double crochet and I think I'm going to go around the center again and then I'll make it come out diagonally up here at this corner chain space so that I can make it go through this group and it's okay if you make it go through the same group of double crochets in the in the chain spaces more than once um, you just want to make sure that it's going in all different directions. So we made that tail kind of go this way and then this way and then this way and then this way and this way and this way and that will help keep it more secure. So now I'm going to go ahead and trim this little bit like so and then that's all the pink tails that we have to weave in. And now I'm going to go ahead and weave in um, this yellow tail right here. And because this is on the second round where there are um, single groups of three double crochet worked into the sides because there's chain spaces on the sides now and not just in the corners, I like to go under those as well. So I'm going to bring my yellow tail up through this group of double crochet diagonally to the next corner chain space and then I'll bring it underneath or through the bottoms of those green double crochet right there like so and then I can kind of bring it down a little bit and then come back up across the top see my needles going across the top of that yellow group of double crochet so that it can go underneath this green group right here So now I think I'm going to bring it diagonally down through this group and then back up through this group to go through that group on the side again. And there's no like precise formula to this. You just want to make sure that the ends are securely woven in. And I like to make sure that they're penetrating the stitches and that they're only going through stitches of the same color just to keep the colors from showing through and to keep the yarn tails from wiggling out. So I've got just a little bit of a tail here left. I'm going to pull the yarn needle out of it and then bring my needle through where I want that end to go. 
and then just thread it back through the eye of the needle before pulling it through my last stitch. So again, we just wanna kinda of tug on it in several directions to even it out. And now we can trim off that little end. So I'm gonna keep kind of using the same manner to weave in all the rest of these tails. I kinda of like to weave them in from the back because that's where they usually are. And I, I prefer the look of the front of the granny square anyway, so I like to weave in all my tails on the back. So I'm gonna weave in all these tails, and then I'll show you how this one looks compared to the more traditional version with the turning chains. All right, so here are my two finished multicolor granny squares. And as you can see, this one on the right has the turning chains and the slip stitches, and it also has that funny little blip in the edge where we joined it with a regular slip stitch. And this one on the left is the one with my seamless method where there is no evidence of a joining place whatsoever. There's no turning chains involved. And it's just a very clean, simple, flawless looking granny square without any of the little uh, turning chains or slip stitch joins. So here are the two squares with the turning chains in them. They're all right there on both of the squares. And then here are my two squares without the turning chains, just the chainless starting stitches and the little uh, trick we used to end the round in the center of the chain space with that half double crochet at the join. And we end up with two different types of flawless, seamless granny squares, perfect for whatever type of project that you like to make with granny squares. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what's your favorite Granny Square project in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.